I just imagine in this episode, Nob being pissed off as fuck, like, all you lazy bums is eating all my food and all my beer. This shit was supposed to last me years. I ain't going to battle. I'm staying up in this place. <laughs> Definitely gotta say, I felt as though this episode was more so character driven. For the most part, the plot, it kind of just stood still. They didn't really, you know, the story didn't really progress forward to the battles or anything like that. It was more so just diving into the characters and how they're feeling before this battle approaches because they're literally 10 minutes away at the end of the episode from them storming the castle and everything going crazy. Probably my favorite bit yet again it has to do with the king and that's where he brings in Nefropito and to be honest with you I thought he was going to behead her straight up. When he asked her did you know that Kamugi was being attacked and she said yeah I was like yo the king is about to fucking rip her head off. And I guess he valued more the fact that she, you know, he can command her and she'll be able to protect Kamugi as well instead of killing her right then and there because it's like, the king is totally showing that he is digging Kamugi. He is totally... He's having an identity crisis right now. He is torn between being this fearless, you know, just not giving a fuck ant to, damn, I have a heart. And it was kind of like thrown in there as well when they were saying, when Knuckle was saying, you know, everyone has a heart. Yeah, the king does have a heart as well, and it's being shown that right now his heart is feeling for Kamugi, and he really does care for her, whether it's love or friendship, whatever it may be, he truly cares for her, and it was definitely displayed there, but I was really sure that the king was going to be head never repeat. I was like, why didn't he do it? Like, he's usually just a fucking monster, but I guess that's his heart kicking in. Stress done did Nav in bro's whole hair is all white his cheeks are sunken in bags under his eyes this shit got him fucking stressed the fuck out and in my opinion while i understand that he's scared and everything and he has every right to feel the way he does because come on like what he felt in there i understand him in every which way but I, in a sense i feel as though it's almost a bit of stupidity for him to say, yo, I can't go back there. Because if they do indeed fail, what, are you going to just stay in there anyways? Are you going to just, like, grab a big refrigerator and, <laughs> and put it in your room and just stay there for the rest of eternity? No. So if they fail, if this mission botches, if this mission doesn't go through, when you possibly could have helped, everyone's going to die anyway. Civilization will probably be wiped out. The king and the ants will take over. So why not, instead of that, just say, you know what? Fuck it, YOLO, I'm going in and I'm going to help. Because now that also places an unfair burden on Morel. Now Morel's like, yo, I'm already tired. I'm, I'm all stressed the fuck out. Everyone is feeling a certain way. And I'm glad that this episode kind of gave a perspective of each and every person and how they're feeling right now. You have the chameleon dude. And forgive me, I just can't remember his name. I remember the octopus's name. I think his name is Ikalgo. Maybe I'm mixing their names up. But I can't remember the, the chameleon dude's name. But you got his perspective of like, yo, I'm really stressed and tense. So I can't do it to my full ability. You got Shoots is depressed. And I was interested also when he said something about Kitawa fading away. It seemed as though Kitawa was fading away. And I was curious as to what he meant because at first he said that Kitawa looks confident. He's no longer scared like when they first had their battle. He doesn't have any fear or anything. But then he says it looks like Kitawa was fading away. Could that be his premonition, some sort of premonition he has that maybe Kitawa is going to lose or die in this battle? Could it mean that he feels as though Kitawa after this battle, like he's on to what, remember what Kitawa proclaimed that after he's done protecting Gon, he's out of there. He's not going to, you know, he's going to have nothing to do with it. So could that be that he's on to, he's understanding that that's what Kitawa is feeling right now. After this, he's kind of going to split up and that's it. So I was curious as to what he meant by that when he said he felt as though Kitawa was fading away. Well, besides that, definitely the episode was really just a standstill. A lot of the planning, while it all is necessary in a certain sense, because the more you go into detail and the more you give explanations, it's good in a sense because it's like, okay, this made sense, that made sense. Everything was pre-written and very well done. At the same time, it's also, you run the risk of explaining too much. In an episode like this, the perspective of each and every character and giving more so of what they're feeling it was good and it was like, okay, this was a character-driven episode. So, but then at the same time, it was like all the planning was, for me personally, just boring and I just didn't really care for it. So it was like good in a sense of, yeah, I love getting the perspective of how the king's feeling, how everyone is feeling in this episode, down to Morel, to Nob, everyone. But the plot kind of just, you know, the story is just that stood still at the moment. And it was just like, okay, at the end of the episode, 10 minutes to go and they were all ready to, you know, go out and storm the castle. So it was like, in a sense... Decent episode. I enjoyed getting the perspective of everyone and seeing where the king is heading. And it's like, fuck, man. And in a perfect world, I would like to see the king, Meadowem, which 
I hope he finally realizes his name. I hope he doesn't die not knowing his name. And by the way, people are saying, how do you know the name? Obviously, his name was said at the very end of the Queen's life. His name is Meruem. Hello? But in a perfect world, I would love to see him and Kamugi go off into the distance, never to be seen or heard from again. That would be, in a perfect world, what I would love to see. But I doubt that's going to happen. I think it's going to be full-on blow with war. I mean, you got, what, 5 million people are outside of the castle, marching towards the castle, brainless because of Poop's ability. So shit is going to get crazy next episode. I, I'm actually just thinking about it during this review. I was like, yo, we're finally heading into this fucking crazy war zone and it's going to be madness and I can't wait. But I really appreciated just the downtime of this episode. I'm going to give this one six and a half out of ten. It was slightly above fine, balancing right there between fine and good. I really just enjoyed the perspective, but definitely could have used more uh, advancement. And as far as the story goes, a little bit more substance to different things besides just the planning. But let me know what you guys think. First of all, what did he mean? What did Shoots mean when he said he felt as though Kitoa was fading away? What, what, like, did he mean that in a literal sense? I doubt that. Did he mean it in a figuratively? In what way, though? And also, how much food, beer, <laughs> and drinks is Nob gonna need to survive the rest of eternity in that room? Because I don't think dude is heading out to that war. No matter how much he cares for Palm and anyone else, he's not leaving that motherfucker room. Hikikomori for life, recluse. And just your overall thoughts of the episode, did you enjoy getting the perspective of each and every character before this war pops up? Because we're an episode away, it seems as though, and I'm excited. That's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up if you can't wait to see how the hell this battle is going to turn out. I can't wait to see when Netero shows up, how the king is going to react, what's going to happen with Kamugi. So many questions, so many answers I need. Can't wait. But I'm for that world, and as always, people, have an awesome day.